everyone welcome to my live today we are going to be talking about uh my mod podge reverse graphic transfer method and i thought it was easier than me doing it and you following along for me to go into my comment section in my video and um answer some questions that always get asked and i think that will be really helpful for everyone I'm going to see if I can get some of the sunlight out of our, that's a little bit better. Uh, I've got a list. I made a list of all kinds of questions that I always see in my comments and I'm going to go through them. And if there's any more that you uh, have, head into the chat and ask me, now's the time, because this is a fantastic uh, technique. And if you can master this, it is a great way to make some extra cash it's a great way to um, just craft and have fun on a budget. It's not really expensive. You, what I love about this transfer technique with Mod Podge, if you've been following along, you've seen me use it all the time. I started my business with a can or can or plastic bottle of Mod Podge making signs. And um, it, it was fantastic. It worked so well. I saved all my scrap wood. I made my chalk paint recipe and I made these signs up and sold them on the side and they did really well. So I love being able to share that with you here and uh, master the techniques so you can do that yourself and make some extra cash. If you have not seen this technique before, I'm going to show you a few examples of what you can make with the Mod Podge graphics. This is one. Isn't this beautiful? This was actually a broken table that I painted with some chalk paint. I love the distressed look. You're going to see a lot of what I do. I end up distressing. I just, that's how I, I like to make my projects. Of course, all of these techniques, put your own spin on it and your own technique, but you can still use the transfer technique and it works fantastic. So this was just a broken table, painted it with my chalk paint. I did a black base, then the white and then I sanded it, and then I did my transfer technique. And I put this in a word program, I sized up my graphics to fit the project, and this is what I created. And it's just a matter of rubbing off the paper, and uh, yeah, how easy is that? So that's one. Here is another example, is this one. Now this was a thrift store frame, and same thing. I painted the frame. I had a piece of wood that I cut for the inside of it because it actually didn't have anything on the inside. So I just put a piece of MDF in there, painted it with the chalk paint, did the reverse technique. I'm trying to get this straight here. And uh, Mod Podge rubbed off the paper. And that's what I created from a thrift store. So all of these are my best sellers. You can pick these frames up um, at the thrift store. So affordable and turn them into... Uh, so many different projects. There's some more inspiration. And another thing that I like to do is save scrap pieces of wood and turn into little signs. So this is just a hunk of scrap wood that was in the, the burn pile and painted it with, because um, Valentine's Day is upon us. I did a Valentine's Day graphic on this one. And another really cute one. This is actually a piece of... Um, I think it's called wainscoting and trimmed it up and that's these if you can find scrap wood and make these with your Mod Podge reverse transfer technique uh best sellers for all of the holidays Christmas time I can make hundreds of them and uh, they all sell great places to sell these projects Facebook marketplace Etsy craft sales if you have a booth these are great to tuck in amongst your booth and sell them and you don't have a lot of initial cost when you're putting them together uh, another thing that you can do with this transfer technique is you can actually transfer it to fabric here is a piece of fabric and i did the transfer technique this these are really fun to add if you're into junk journaling or mixed media or scrapbooking these are great to add into that. How's... Now, all of these graphics that I'm showing you today, of course, are in my um, Etsy store. You can find them and craft with them. 
and I don't have them copyrighted, so you can use these graphics and sell them, and there's not an issue. Isn't this one pretty? An old photo. And this was just a scrap piece of fabric that I got at the thrift store, and I cut into different smaller sizes here and there, and added them to it. Now, all of these, I think this, some of these, these ones here, they all come in a sheet of uh, graphics that there's six or seven graphics all on one page that you can print off and add to either a transfer technique on wood or fabric. There's another one that actually, this one I have done on a glass jar to make it look like old pottery and then added this graphic on it. Beautiful. And an old vintage photo. And if you have any questions about this technique, head down into the comments and ask away and I can guide you along and answer your questions. There's another nice one. And then this one, I added the fabric on and turned it into a card and just used a piece of scrapbooking paper. And then I glued the fabric on the card. So that's just some examples. Now I'm going to go to uh, my list of questions and just kind of go down and I'll answer them. And uh, I'm sure if you're having any issues with this technique, there's going to be something in here that's going to answer them. So the first one, how do you prepare the surface before applying the Mod Podge? So the first thing, I'm just going to get a marker here. Um, the first thing that works the best when doing this technique is a chalk painted base. It does not work well with uh, latex paint or you can do it with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint does work pretty good. I wouldn't do it for a beginner though. If you're just beginning with this technique, chalk paint is your best surface to do the transfer technique on unless you're doing it on fabric um, and, and fabric is absorbent. So it's going to pull in that uh, Mod Podge into the fabric and allow you to transfer better. So that's good. Canvases. This works fantastic on canvases, but don't try to do it straight on the canvas. You want to make sure that you have the canvas painted with chalk paint and then you can do the transfer technique and it works really well. The next question, can I use regular printer paper for image transfers with Mod Podge? So when you're doing the image transfer, I use the cheapest computer paper that you can find. Uh, if you're buying a thicker paper, it's gonna be harder to rub the paper off. So the, this is an, an instance where you don't want good quality paper. You want junk paper, stuff that's just going to be printed on quick and be able to rub the paper off. I like actually one of the papers that work really well, well for me is the Amazon Basics. And uh, you can find that on Amazon and buy it in the box of, I think it's 100, 500 sheets or something. That works the best for me to do the transfer technique. Regular computer paper. Uh, what type of Mod Podge is best for the reverse technique? So the best is Mod Podge Matte. This is my go-to when I'm doing the image transfer. You can use the gloss um, they do make a photo transfer Mod Podge also. Don't spend the extra money on it. It work, This works just as well as a photo transfer one. The gloss you can use, but just be mindful after you do your transfer that the image is going to be glossy. It's not going to be matte. So if you're, if you're fine with that, then that's, that's good. But I also find that it doesn't blend in as well. You have that glossy look of the Mod Podge and it just doesn't blend in well with your chalk painted surface. So my go-to is the Mod Podge matte. Um, how long does it take for the Mod Podge to dry when doing image transfers? There's a lot of controversy over that. Myself, um, I like to leave them 24 hours. You can do it a little bit sooner depending on your weather, if it's nice and dry, or um, if you're doing it and you can put them out in the sun, they might dry a little bit faster. But my set rule is kind of 24 hours and and then do and then rub the paper off. Uh, if you do it too quickly, the Mod Podge hasn't had enough time to dry, soak into that chalk paint and do the, tr the transfer properly. And that could be why you're having issues rubbing off some of that image when you're trying to do it. So 
always best practice just to leave it for 24 hours and be patient. I know sometimes it's hard to leave it because we get excited and we want to have them done, but it's best to leave them. Um, can I use Mod Podge on fabric for the reverse technique? And the answer, like I already showed you, is yes, you can. Here's a whole bunch that I did on fabric. They work best on a natural fiber. So if you can do cotton, linen, um, a very tightly weaved burlap, that works best for the transfer. If you're doing something like silk or something that's really slippery, then they don't transfer as well. So try to get something that you know when you're picking up a piece of fabric that it, you know that the Mod Podge is gonna sink into it and you'll get a better transfer. Um, how do I avoid air bubbles and wrinkles when applying the image? That is avoided by not putting on too much Mod Podge. If you're putting on a really thick coat of Mod Podge, you're gonna get bubbles, you're gonna get wrinkles. It's going to be thick when you're done your transfer and you're gonna see the outline you don't need very much Mod Podge when doing the um, transfer technique. It just takes a real light coat and the transfer will happen. You don't need very much. So that will avoid the bubbles and the wrinkles. The most is just putting on a thin coat of the Mod Podge. And that goes for decoupaging too. It's just you don't need very much. You just need a light coat. So that answer is that. Do I need to seal the project? after using Mod Podge reverse technique? And the answer is that's completely up to you. But myself, if it was um, if it was a product that I was selling, I would definitely seal it. You have a couple options to seal it. You can seal it with a wax. You can seal it with Mod Podge on top of it again. So it would be a second layer of Mod Podge. Or you can use polycrylic sealer. That's my favorite. I love the polycrylic sealer as a top coat. Now I have some spray here. Um, I don't use this on my signs. I use a brush on polyacrylic and that's my favorite to seal them up. Uh, it's nice, it's clear, and it gives it a nice crisp look when it's all finished. Um, it would be really cool if you go there. Let me just see if I can move that. I had a glare from the window, so that's why I moved it so that shelf was in the way. I'm not really, let me just see here. Maybe that's better. That might be better. I was trying to avoid the, the glare, the glare in the uh, window there that we had going on. Okay, can I use Mod Podge with laser printed images? Laser printed images are the go-to when doing this technique. You can do it with an inkjet, but it's tricky. And they it's a little bit harder to rub off because an inkjet, the ink has a tendency to want to run and to rub off. So you have to do it really slow. Don't run out and grab a laser printer. I'm not saying that you have to because you can make it work with an inkjet. It just takes a little bit more time. But if you have a laser printer, that is ideal for this um, method and so much quicker especially if you're going to be selling your projects a laser printer will save you so much time and the laser printers are not like what they used to be they're a lot cheaper now you can find a laser tr uh, printer i have a brother laser printer that i probably had for oh my goodness probably almost three years now and i still see that one on amazon for 199 so it's not too bad if you're going to be crafting a lot then that's probably your best bet to invest in a laser printer and save yourself the trouble in trying to um, fuss with an inkjet printer. What surfaces are best for the Mod Podge image transfer technique? So the best surfaces is a smooth surface. You don't want to have something that has a lot of texture to it because what happens is that paper is gonna go in all that texture and you're gonna to have to get all that paper off by rubbing it. I have done it, um, but it is, it's a lot of work and it's just better if you start with a smooth surface. So if we go back to uh, like this photo, or this graphic transfer here, it's very smooth. So it makes it really easy when you're rubbing the paper off um, and it's not very textured. 
and and of course this one too it's very smooth so the paper rubs off easy so that's what you want to look for to have your ideal transfer technique is a smooth surface on wood on canvas on glass on um, tin cans anything like that as long as a, a smooth surface it's painted with chalk paint you can do a transfer method is the ink expensive for laser printers? Um, the ink can get a little bit pricey for laser printers, but what you have to remember with a laser printer, the ink lasts five, six times longer than an inkjet. So the initial cost might be a little bit more, but your ink is gonna last way longer than an inkjet. And what I've done with my, my brother laser printer is I buy my ink on eBay and uh, I've never had any issues with it. It's the refill refillable cartridges um, and it's half the price in store-bought. You wanna be careful because if you're buying a brand new printer, sometimes the warranty will, you know, it will be not any good anymore. Um, but like I said, I've had mine for so long, I don't worry about that too much. And it just keeps going and going. And I can buy replaceable ink in mine. The last time I bought it, I think I paid $30 for it and that will last me six months and I print a lot. I have never kept track of how many prints I actually get out of it, but it lasts a long time. So long story short, it is expensive in the beginning, but in the long run, it's going to be cheaper than an inkjet. And I love when you guys head into the comments and ask questions because it's a great place to get them answered right away. How can I troubleshoot if my Mod Podge image transfer didn't work as expected? So what's great about this is if you have, if you're trying to do this technique and it's not working for you and you're having issues, um, I love when people send me photos. You can do it in Facebook or you can do it on Instagram um, and send me a little photo of your project and I can probably look at it for right away and I can tell you what your issue is. So if you're having problems with this technique, I love guiding you along head in, pop into my DMs on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll help you out. Okay, another question. So we're going down, so if you're just joining, we're going down uh, the list of a, most of my asked questions on this technique, and I'm answering them as we go. I've had my laser printer almost a year and haven't had to buy any yet. So that's exactly, like it lasts a long time. And I'm creating all the time. Like I printed, like the other day, I was showing in my live all of my uh, Valentine graphics. And I printed all of these. And they just keep going. Whoops, upside down. They just keep going and going. So it's uh, a laser printer, if you're using it a lot, is definitely worth the investment. Can you post the link to the cloth photo transfer? I missed it. Yeah, so the, I'll put that down in the description after the live stream ends. Um, I have a full tutorial on how to do the photo transfer onto the onto fabric, and it's really easy to do. So I'll post that down. Yep. Um, what materials do I need for image transfer? So that's what I love about this technique. You don't need any special tools. You don't need, um, like if you're getting into wanting to put graphics on some of your DIYs and you buy a Cricut, then you have to buy vinyl and then you have to buy your weeding tools and they're expensive. And of course, now you have to add all of those prices into your DIYs if you're a reseller or if you are um, using stencils. Of course, your stencils, you're limited to one word or one design and you have to use it over and over again. And so that really limits you and then you have to buy stencil after stencil after stencil or make your stencils on the Cricut. Uh, so it's not really cost efficient once you can master this technique. Uh, and that's what I love about using the Mod Podge. So to do this technique, all you need is Mod Podge, a paintbrush, some chalk paint and scrap wood and a printer and you're good to go. And you can do, I, I mean, I get all kinds of little pieces of scrap wood and I'll put five or six images on a sheet of paper. I'll size them to the size of my block of wood, print them off all on one sheet of paper, Mod Podge them, 
good to go. And you're not having to cut out a vinyl and or do a stencil. I just love it. And I know some people, they get a little bit discouraged in the beginning and it doesn't work well for them. It takes time, just like anything. You're not going to do it first try and it's going to be perfect. You've got to practice. Um, so it just takes a little bit of just sitting in your craft room, giving it a try. And I can guarantee you after you've done four or five of them, it, you're going to get it and it's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much, Melissa. I'm so glad you're enjoying all of my content. And I'm thankful that I have all you guys here to hang out with and share my crafting techniques with. And even if I can help someone create some DIYs and make a little bit of extra spending money or help get started in a new crafting business, um, it makes my heart happy. So I'm glad to be able to do that. So we covered that. Can I use any type? Okay, we're getting into some of the same questions that I answered before, but I'll go through them quickly. Uh, can I use any type of paper for image transfer? Cheap computer paper. You don't want anything expensive. You only want cheap stuff. I like the Amazon basic paper and um, that's all I use. If you're going, the one thing is if you don't have a laser printer and you are he heading to um, Staples or your stationery store, make sure you ask them because they use really good quality paper. So what happens is now you've gone, you've had them printed at the, the stationery store, you've do, you're doing this technique and then you're bringing it home and you're trying to rub the paper off and you're like, I can't get it to rub off. It's because they use really good quality paper. So if you're going in and that's your only option, if you need to print some stuff off, um, make sure they that ask if they can use the cheapest computer paper that they have. And that might solve that issue for you if you have to go out and have them printed somewhere. Is it possible to do image transfers on fabric or other surfaces? Of course, we already talked about the fabric, but you can do them on glass jars. I have really great tutorials on how to paint glass to do the transfer technique on. If you've seen that video, you can do it on tin cans. The only thing is you have to make sure that you're prepping your surface first. So you want to make sure you have that chalk painted base. If you try to do this technique on raw wood, it's tricky. I can do it, um, but it's taken me a long time to master that technique. It's not something for a beginner. So if you're just starting off, don't get a hunk of wood. So like, don't get a hunk of wood like this and think you're gonna do an image transfer on it and it's gonna work, because it's not, it's not gonna work. If this was painted with chalk paint, it would work and you would have a beautiful transfer on it. But raw wood is tricky, it doesn't work that well. So tin cans, glass jars, wood, canvas, fabric. Now the fabric is the only exception that you don't have that have to have that chalk painted um, surface, but everything else, as long as you can get a chalk painted surface on there, you're going to be able to do a transfer technique. I like the vintage look of it. Me too. I, yes. And the, the big trick is to let it dry overnight and let it really cure and set well. And, uh, and it works really well if you can give it that extra time. Don't rush it. And of course, cold coffee on the go. I never drink a coffee that's actually hot. And I'm, I don't know if anybody ever does it. Uh, what type of printer? We already went over that. The laser. Can I use inkjet printed images for transfers? We already went over that. Now I do have, I think two or three videos on inkjet versus laser jet. And I actually did it side by side. So you had an inkjet and you had a laser jet and I did them both. And then you can see the difference. It's a really great tutorial if you're only uh, if you only have an inkjet printer, and then you can see, I find the inkjet, it's a little bit more, uh, it's lighter and a little bit more rustic looking. And that might be something that you want for your signs. So check that video out and you can see the difference and, um, and maybe you would like the inkjet better. How do I prevent smudging, smudging or bleeding during the image transfer? So the only time that you're ever going to have smudging or bleeding happening is if you're using an inkjet printer. And usually what happens and or why that is happening is because you're using too much water. Inkjet is water based. So if you're introducing water on it and then you're rubbing it off, it only makes sense that the ink is going to rub off too. 
So when you're doing a transfer with an inkjet printer, minimal water, that's the trick. You don't want very much water, small sections. If you're putting water all over your inkjet transfer, letting it soak in, and then you're trying to rub it off really quickly, it's not gonna work. It's gonna rub off really easy. You're gonna get smudging, you're gonna get smearing and bleeding. So with an inkjet, small sections, rub off really carefully in a small area, move on to the next section and on to the next section. It can be done. It's tricky and it's slower. It's still fun, but um, it can be done. Should I apply a sealant or protective coating after image transfers? Okay, we already covered that too. Some of these I've already answered, but I will because there's still people joining in. When I finished these transfer techniques like this one, you have a couple options, actually three options, I guess. You could use a wax, a clear wax. You can use some more Mod Podge as a top coat, or you can use a polycrylic sealer. This is spray foam, I like or spray form. Um, I like using a can of it and brushing it on. This is my favorite. I You can use Mod Podge, but Mod Podge is thick. And I find as a top coat, I just don't care for the look of it. Um, and it looks a little bit artificial. So by using the polycrylic sealer on top, that finishes it off really nice for me. Thanks, Cynthia. So glad you're enjoying all of my content here. Okay, let's go on to the next sheet and see what we have here. Um, okay, if you are interested, I know many of you have already grabbed it, but I have a paint recipe booklet in my Etsy store. It's 11 of my favorite paint recipes. Um, it has my favorite chalk paint recipe in it. And now I've made this kind of into a little junk journal, but it's a digital download that you can um, download on your printer at home and then have it. As, as for me, sometimes it's nice to have something in my hand that I can go back and look at like a recipe book. And uh, if you haven't grabbed this, this is a really great resource for all of the different painting techniques that I do. My chalk paint recipe is in there. The, my favorite one that I use for all of these transfer techniques. So that will be down in the uh, description below afterwards. I'll put it there if you want to check that out in my Etsy store. Um, maybe I'll go over it. The other thing that I have in my Etsy store that's a really great resource is if you are a reseller, if you have a booth or you're thinking about starting your own crafting business or you just want to know how to price your DIYs if you're going to sell them online. I created a booklet of the formula that I use to price my DIYs. Now, of course, this is for smaller items. It's not going to be, uh, if you have a great big, huge item that's taking you hours and hours to do, this isn't going to be really relevant. But for little signs and upcycled thrifting, thrifted stuff, this is great. And it figures out the wholesale cost, the retail cost. And it breaks it down and makes it really easy if you're just starting. Uh, this one, I've got a sheet here of calculating the retail cost of it. It's really good to have on hand if that's what you are trying to do and start up a, uh, a crafting business. And of course, the last page is going to add it all up and it's going to give you your wholesale cost, your retail cost. And again, downloadable printable booklet that's in my Etsy store fantastic resource to have. And the other thing that I love because I'm a scatterbrain squirrel all over the place, especially if I'm doing craft sales, you have so many things on your mind that you're trying to organize, get together on top of making your product that you're taking not only your not only a craft sale, but your booth or if you're um, going out and to a craft fair or a market. So I did an ultimate craft show checklist. And this is great because it's got everything listed. You just have to check it off as you have it packed for that day. It takes out all of the thinking. Uh, did I remember this? Remember this? It's all right on one sheet. So it's fantastic. I also have a customer email list in there. So when people are coming to your booth, you can get their email list so you can send them out newsletters afterwards. Uh, there's a receipt and uh, two receipts here, uh, printables that you can print off. And then you can give receipts to anybody that wants them. A sales tracker sheet. If you want to keep tra track of your sales from your craft sale or your yard, even yard sale or in your booth, there's a sale 
sale tracker and an order form if somebody has a custom order and you're going to make it after you can have everything all on the information there this is a really great little booklet again in my etsy store that might be something that uh, you want to look into if you want to start selling some of your crafts um okay so where are we at can i use acrylic paint to transfer the answer is yes you can but it's a little bit trickier it is um chalk paint is more absorbent so it pulls that mod podge into the paint to do more of a crisp transfer where i find acrylic paint doesn't quite do it as well um so like i said you can do it with acrylic paint but if you're a beginner i would stick with the chalk paint for the for the um transfer technique oil best paint oil based paint no doesn't work watercolor paint the same as the acrylic the you with the water base it's not quite as easy you can make it work but again i would go with the chalk paint especially if you're a beginner um spray paint spray paint if it's a matte spray paint it's not too bad actually to do the transfer um, and it, it works pretty good. That's a, actually probably the second alternative over a chalk paint is the spray paint, but it has to be matte. Do not try to do it with a gloss or even a semi-gloss or a satin. Uh, it won't transfer very well because you want that Mod Podge to soak into that paint and it being glossy, it just doesn't allow the Mod Podge to soak in. So you're not going to have a transfer go through. But if you're getting a flat chalk paint or a matte chalk paint, it allows the uh, Mod Podge to soak through and it works pretty good. Um, is there any other questions that anybody has about this technique? Hit me up down in the um, comments. I think I actually covered everything pretty well. Um, and again, you can save your tin cans, you can save your glass jars and bottles, bits and pieces of wood, little pieces of fabric, and you can do these transfer techniques on them and it works really well and it's fun and it's affordable. And that's what I love about it, especially if you're going to be selling your products, we want it to be affordable. We want more money in your pocket and then what you're playing out for your supplies. So I think I'll sign off here. Thank you so much everyone for joining. I hope this was helpful. This is a little bit different of a format for my lives. Usually I'm doing a technique and a, a project and I'm showing you overhead. But I thought today's would be easier if I just did it talking one on one and answering the questions. So let me know down in the comments whether you enjoyed this type of format and I'll sign off and we're going to see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out, everyone.